So cross joins. What are cross joins? I think you already know. Let's say we have team names, four of them, and four city names. And we need to jumble them all together to get all the different combinations. We have four times four. That's going to be 16 total, as you can see right here. Maybe we're doing a softball schedule. Maybe we're doing auditions in different cities, whatever. You may have come across this before. Put in the comments when you've had to do this. Sometimes there's an easy manual way. Sometimes we have to enlist a little bit more of an automated way. So we're going to explore all the creative different ways to do a cross join. I'm sure there'll be some disagreement here. There's always disagreement in Excel land. That's okay. So let's get on to the first, the manual method. How would I do something like this manually? So what I do first is take these city names and transpose them. Then I want to copy them all the way down. So Thunderbats gets each city, lightning strikes same, so on and so forth. I'm going to do some color coding real quick. Make that green. And let's make that yellow. That way I don't get, I don't lose my place. So I do my manual copy. And there we're done. We've got 16 total rows. Each team has each city essentially. But of course, when you're doing something manually, all kinds of things can go wrong. You can delete something by mistake, copy something by mistake. Maybe not ideal solution. Let's do it with a pivot table. How can we do it with a pivot table? It can be done. It's kind of weird though. And before I did any of this on Excel, I used to do it on Microsoft Access, which I'm not going to use anymore. I know it's a, probably going to be gone soon, replaced by Power Query and whatnot. We're not going to show you the access way, sorry. So my first step is to transpose these. And essentially, we have these as headers and values. So now that I've done that, I'm going to do my pivot table. Go over to my field, team ID first. And then this, I'm going to go to add two values. Same here, same here, same there. Now, as you notice here, when you put a bunch of stuff in values, it makes different columns and puts this unique sigma values thing up here. So let's take that and move that to row labels. I have a nice up and down. So now we can alter our pivot table. First, we're going to put it in tabular form. And we're going to have repeating rows. And I do not like subtotals. I do not like grand totals. And we've got 16. So far, so good. How do we mess with this? Well, that's just a find and replace. Let's find count of space and replace with nothing. There we go. There's our cross join using pivot tables. How about using a formula? Chat GPT often has good ideas, and here's what it came up with for this problem. We just essentially don't have to transpose anything this time. So let's plug it in. Index. Choose our array, lock it. And for the row number, it's going to be 1 plus int, two parentheses, row, whatever row we're in, minus 2. Close parentheses, count A, and this, locked. So now I can go down a bunch of rows, and where you see ref is no good. But gave me 16 total team listings, which is good. Now for the second helper column, they call it. Index, choose our cities, lock it. And then it's going to be 1 plus MOD row that we're in, minus 2. We don't close those parentheses. Count A. Same thing. Lock. And it's just basically repeated this. And the logic here, I think, is a little intricate to get into in this video. It's not really the point. It's just kind of using different ways to execute a cross join. And this one is AI written. So there we go. That's not too bad. Let's try another formula. 
can we do to get these frost joints? I'm going to transpose across the top, and here's what I'm going to do. Fell in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to do equal sign, whatever this is, ampersand, and then put a space in there, another ampersand, and concatenate with this array, the whole array. Look what it does. Now the problem is we didn't lock our array, so let's do that. F2, F4, F4. That's better. Sorry about that. So there we go. We're on our way. We just need to reference this in a V stack. How do we do that? Because if you know your arrays, that is essentially V2 with a hashtag. That's how we can reference that array. That's C2 with a hashtag. So how can we get that in a nice list? F2 equals cell. First one is address. I'm going to do address. And the reference is just going to be that. See, it comes back with a reference in absolute referencing. But we want the hashtag after it. So we go back in the formula, tack on a, in quotes, hashtag. Now for this, we can do a text join. I want there to be a comma after that. I'm going to skip over this argument and just highlight all of these. And look, it's joined it together with commas. That's what I want. I actually want to copy and paste special values over that. F2 to go into the cell, and then I want to highlight everything. It doesn't work if you don't highlight everything and hit Control C. So now we do a VStack. VStack is going to have all that. Basically, this array, this array, this array, this array. If you had 20 of them, it would be a pain. So I did it that way. Done. 16 total listings. You might be asking, why can't I do it this way? Just have that ampersand and this array lock. It's because you get that dreaded spill error, which is why I put this across the top so I could drag it get my concatenated array stuff, and then vStack it. Again, I'm sure there are better ways. That's why I rely on you guys in the comments. This is just a demonstration on how I would do it several different ways. Now, it becomes problematic when you have a larger set of team and city names. Right here, we got 15 times 15, 225. So doing that manually is going to be a pain using our color-coded method, pivot table method. Try it out. We're going to table all this, and we're going to have to get our groove on here with the team name, and then these all go in values instead of getting my hand cramped by clicking on that, which I, I'm not a believer in anyway. I'm going to go to the right click and add two values. I'm going to speed this up for you. So there we go. We have everything in values now. I'm going to tab over to where this says values. Right click. And go down to move to row labels. So let's do that. So we have to do some formatting, JYPT, tabular, alt JYPR, repeating, alt JYTD to remove subtotals, alt JYGF to remove grand totals. Maybe that's not all necessary, but whatever. I'm just going to copy this without the headers so I can, so I don't get another pivot table. If you, if you don't do that right, you're going to get just a whole other pivot table. I just want the data from the pivot table. Let's remove count of. Stuff's already in there. 225 placements. I can tell you right now these are 225 rows. So not too bad. Probably not the method I would choose. I'm just going to try my other formula method here. So this ampersand, that array, lock it. And actually, in between those two, let's put a space. 
other ampersand. Copy over. Then let's get our address using cell address, comma, go up here, close that, do an ampersand, and then in quotes the hashtag. That's B2 array, and it's copied it over. So then the next step is to do text join. Limiter is going to be comma. Skip over that argument and go highlight all those references. So now we have our nice argument that we can copy and paste. Copy, paste special values, F2, highlight all this, copy, and then go to VStack, paste. How many do we have? 125. I really don't think that was bad at all. I'm not sure I would save something like this in my notes, to be honest. It's not really that intuitive, so I really can't remember it. I'm going to skip over that and just probably use that. Although, a better option might be to use Power Query. So let's run through that. We have our two tables, essentially. And what I'm going to do is take this and put it across the top. You should see me doing that a lot, right? Basically, I want these to be headers. So yeah, now that I have these as headers, I want to also copy them down. Shift Alt page down, highlights over to the right. Copy that down, and then we can convert this now into a table. Control T. Yes, my table has headers. There we go. Alt A for data. Then up here you see PT, which is create a new query from table or range. So PT. Brings up Power Query for us. So far, so good. We have over to the grid. Basically, you can't hold down Control and Shift like you're in Excel. You have to just hold down Shift and then just hold down the right arrow. After doing that, what do you do? You go to Alt, P for Transform. Under that tab, you have the option to unpivot columns. Let's do that. U. And only the selected columns. If you noticed, I skipped over the first column, which was the index of the team names. I highlighted all the other stuff. So only selected columns hit enter. And look, we have three columns, 225 rows. So let's load that. H, C, enter. There we go, not bad, right? 225, as you can see down here in the count. We've got an extra column here we can just get rid of. There we go, there's another way to cross join. I like to think there's no one right way to do anything, but obviously when you have a lot of data, doing it manually just isn't gonna be an option. So consider these other methods in order to do a cross join. Tell me if there's another method that you would like to see or that you know of or you'd like to share for cross join. I hope you enjoyed this lesson.